Welcome back to Trading 360. In the 360 round, we're talking all about meme stocks. Everybody remembers in 2021 when you started to see GameStop, BlackBerry, Bed Bath & Beyond on the cover of your papers, regular papers, not business newspapers, and the whole world was getting involved, and Reddit was the spiritual home of all the chat about all of this. So now what? When we see GameStop selling off today, what are we to think? Logan Gillen's with us, analyst at Jewel Financial, Jim Warden, CIO, The Wealth Consulting Group. Thank you both for being with us. So, Jim, um, in your mind, and, you know, we see a lot of short interest, for example, and that was one of the things in my mind, you know, they were going back and forth. Tell me a little bit, Jim, about what in your mind qualifies as a meme stock in the first place. That's a great question. Good good to be with you, Nicole. Uh, I, I would say whenever markets kind of have this rise, rising tide type of environment where, uh, you know, there's a little bit of FOMO and people are worried about missing out, sometimes you see some frothy areas uh, pick up. And certainly we've seen that with uh, some of the Bitcoin ETFs and Bitcoin price itself. But other names, uh, you know, you can look at uh, a MicroStrategy, super microcomputer that have just had uh, you know, off the charts type of uh, performance. We we tend to really look at these things quantitatively, and we want to look at free cash flows. We want to look at growth and earnings and profits, and um, we do look at trend. We do look at momentum, but uh, you know, those are not the only things that we're looking at. I mean, there was certainly this feeling that meme stocks were not a good investment. They were considered risky because of the extreme volatility. Um, and, and so, Logan, when we look at a name like GameStop, which ran up, ran down, and today obviously getting hit hard after its latest quarter, what do you think about a name like GameStop? In fact, um, you know, they were talking, Wedbush was talking about the demise of this name by the end of the decade. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not Roaring Kitty. I do not like the stock. I mean, they came out 27% uh, below earnings estimate, so they were they were quite low on that. Um, and I also just looking at the stock and evaluating it, they're not putting forward guidance, obviously down 15% today. It's getting hurt. I mean, I, I don't know necessarily if the stock's going to go away forever, but uh, it, it is not a company we like here and and they don't have debt which is a nice part of their balance sheet but the overall earnings projection they definitely look like they're in a bear market trend and kind of continuing down along with the other meme stocks from 2021 that really have been kind of down to pre-pandemic levels if not lower so your amcs your uh, nicola the bed bath and beyond all these different ones that have kind of gone crazy and come all the way back down. So it, it's not something that we're playing in those meme stocks necessarily, but uh, I, I loved what the other guests said about kind of the FOMO in the different areas. And, and I think we're gonna get a new area and AI is gonna be one of those that's gonna have some, some FOMO and gonna have some fervor that happens in this bull market that we're currently in. All right. And then when we think about some of the names that uh, have been meme stocks but then came back to earth, when you think about trading the names now, currently, we have a name like GameStop, uh, Jim. What else are you watching? I mean, you're, there is still a FOMO environment right now. There are still people with money on the sidelines that say, hey, look, 2024 looks like maybe I should put some money to work. What do you tell them? Uh, I tell them that they need to be diversified. They need to not just look at trend and momentum. Uh, I've been looking at trend and momentum along with quality and value and low volatility. These are factors that go back decades and, and they've been proven to work. They don't always work at the same time. And sometimes there's droughts that they don't work. Uh, but you know that that's what that's what we do. And and so I think when you get, you know, uh, Markets like this, where you know it feels like it's just going straight up, and you start seeing, uh, you know, tr trends just becoming really, really strong. We, we kind of have to take a step back and say, okay, what are the fundamentals? We love the technicals, and we we, we like to see good, stable trends. Uh, but I always wonder, like, okay, if a toothpaste maker is performing just as well as a semiconductor stock, you know, that something could be a little bit. Uh, out of place there. So always just looking at it. Uh, and, and we want to know, like, if if the multiple is really, really high, we're OK with owning it if it's growing at 50 percent or 100 percent. Right. Now, obviously, we know that the growth can't 
stay sustainable like that. But for what's happening now, we're in the very, very early innings of this AI boom. And uh, we, we may have another 12 to 18 or 24 months of very strong growth for some of these companies. And so we have to take that into mind. Uh, we also have to look at the price that we're paying. Uh, we have to look at things like free cash flows and quality. Okay. So. Yeah. Yeah, understood, understood. Um, and, you know, I just put in Nikola just to see, because remember all the hype about that one? It was so exciting. I mean, it's less than a buck. Rivian, when it first came out, people were kind of, first of all, I don't give stock advice, but people would ask me at parties, you think I should get Rivian? You know, and all I say is, you know, a lot of the traders I know don't jump into IPOs. They wait and try and get some more data, historical data. I mean, I, I just, you know, I don't want to give advice one way or another. I don't want to be wrong, certainly, and it's not my job. That's not what I'm qualified for. So, Logan, when you look at some of these names that have come public, Reddit, um, the Trump DJT yesterday, which soared six, almost 60 percent in trading, it finished up about 15, 16 percent. Do you think that these are meme stocks, maybe, or no? You have to wait and see. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's kind of a wait and see. I mean, there's definitely some news headlines, and maybe that is part of the definition of a meme stock is, like, what is the news driving for retail investors? And, and I think uh, DJT is obviously one of them that has had some volatility and is going to continue. And, and on both sides, you know, you have the short, the short buyer, short squeeze going on on one side and, and people that are buying shorts on the other. So there's a lot of things that are happening on, on stocks and names like that. I think what we're focused on is similar to what Jim is saying is, OK, the semiconductor space and AI might be a proxy for what the rest of the market is doing, where you have a, a market that has had a couple of really big companies, NVIDIA, AMD, that have done really, really well. But some of the things under the surface, like your small cap companies, have not done as well. So maybe not touching some of these true socials or some of the, the names out there that are really meme stocks, but finding the small cap areas in a place that's worked like AI that also has value. So I'm talking about a company like AI, the ticker, not just AI, or um, an AMCR that is a small cap company that has value underlying, but is in a space that could have momentum and movement moving forward. Yeah, I see in your notes, you said you like C3 AI, and you just mentioned um, the other one, AMCR. Thank you both so much. It's been great to see you both here. Um, as we see uh, DJT today at 67.64, up another 16%. So it's a wild ride, guys. Logan Gilland, Jim Warden, thank you.